eBay sellers and YouTubers don't know shit about keywords. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about keywords on eBay and how you can use them to generate more sales. Let's get started. A keyword is just any word or words that our customers type into eBay when they're trying to find products. Our goal is to make sure that the keywords we try to target with our listings are relevant and highly searched. Let's pretend that we're selling these shoes. The keyword shoes get searched up to 10 million times per month on Google and probably at least hundreds of thousands of times on eBay. You might think that it would be the best to show up here with these guys when somebody searches shoes, but it's not because shoes is too general of a keyword it's too top of funnel. This is what I'm referring to when I say top of funnel. It's the purchase funnel, ADA, awareness, interest, desire, and action. When somebody's searching for shoes on eBay, they're just aware that they can probably find some shoes on eBay that they like. So if somebody searched shoes and our shoe was here, we might get some sales, but it's going to be very unlikely because it's too broad. We're selling these black and white Nike Air Force Ones, and that might be the keywords that someone uses in their title. They might just put leave it at that. Maybe put in like the size, the colors, maybe like the little serial number and the tongue. We're going to start with Air Force One. Here you can see a screenshot from eBay showing the search volume for Air Force One being 36,000 searches per month. I'm going to show you how you can get this data yourself later on in the video, but I want to make a point. So I'm hiding this information for now. I'm going to reveal it and then show you how to get it later. We can see that there's 200,000 results for Air Force One. Look at some of these titles. We see Nike Air Force One, Nike Air Force One. They're using Nike a lot. Uh, this one doesn't have Nike in the title. One thing you probably already know is that the first words in your eBay listing title are the most important. They're weighed the heaviest by the algorithm. So you want your main keyword to be the very first thing that is in your title. Here's that point I wanted to make. Nike Air Force One is a better keyword than just Air Force One because as you can see in the data here, Nike Air Force One gets searched 51,000 times per month and Air Force One by itself only gets 36,000 searches per month. So this listing here, this person is missing out on 15,000 potential customers. Let's put Nike up here. So when we search for Nike Air Force One, we notice that only 150,000 listings are here now. With just Air Force One, we had over 200,000 listings. By knowing this data, you're not only getting more exposure, but you're also reducing your competition. There's 50,000 less items competing with yours now. And the really tragic thing about our old friend here missing out on 15,000 searches, that's not just 15,000 searches, period. That's every month. So if it takes you three months on average to sell something, that person just missed out on 45,000 opportunities to sell those shoes. Here's the full keyword data for this particular listing. And the thing I want to point out is that you can see here there's different like fragments. They're all kind of the same. And eBay will recommend these keywords to you based on what the listing title is. So if you want to get a wide variety of keyword data, then you're going to have to put a wide variety of keywords into a title on like a test listing just so that you can kind of learn what's important, what's not. And here you can see, like, if your most important keyword is the very first one, you're going to want your first keyword to be Nike Air Force One in this listing. And we can see Terror Squad is an important keyword, too, because that's the model of this particular shoe. So do you put Terror Squad before Air Force One or after? Well, you can see here having Air Force One Terror Squad as a keyword is better than having Terror Squad AF1. So in this case, you would do Nike Air Force One Terror Squad and then probably do black, white, your size, all that good stuff. All right, so let's see how you get this data now. You're going to want to go to your marketing tab in eBay and go to advertising dashboard. And this is going to pull up all these different options. You probably use promoted listing standard. We want promoted listings advanced. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new campaign and we're going to do promoter listing advance and we're going to do manual here. Uh, campaign name doesn't matter. Good. We could just put one. It, none of this stuff matters. You just want to do manual setup and we're going to name our ad group. Doesn't matter. Now let's add some listings. What I'm going to do for the sake of this example is just add all of my listings. Um, you wouldn't do this if you were going to like actually launch a campaign like this, but for the purpose of this demo, uh, we just want to see what keywords are best for my store overall. And you can see here all these suggested keywords pop up and we can sort them by their monthly searches. We can see lot gets a lot more searches. <laughs> 
uh, than everything else. Um, but this shows you which cards are most popular. So like Michael Jordan, obviously a very popular keyword. Uh, baseball cards, football cards. I'm surprised these are so close, honestly. Uh, sports cards, very low. Michael Jordan cards, huge drop compared to just Michael Jordan. Uh, but this shows you all these different keywords so you can get an idea of how many searches there are per month. And you can see here, Jerry Rice rookie card. Um, if we if we were doing a listing standard, let's, um, let's just pull that up real quick actually. We'll do Jerry Rice rookie card. All right, so look at this. We have the, the, everybody does it the same for sports cards. So you have like the year, the brand, the number, and then Jerry Rice and maybe rookie card. One of the things I would be curious to test is what it would be like if you just did your title, Jerry Rice rookie card, and then put like the year and tops and 161 after. That would be interesting to see if that would get you to rank higher. And that's something that I'm gonna test with sports cards. When we pop into the solds for Jerry Rice Rookie Card, you'll notice these aren't Jerry Rice Rookie Cards, right? So if we look at this listing here, this is going to illustrate how important the item specifics are. Because even though this isn't a Jerry Rice Rookie Card, <laughs> um, they, this seller put all these big name players into the player and athlete category so that they'd pop up for more of these searches. And they also have... Um, all these keywords here like the rookie card as a feature now I wouldn't advise doing this uh, especially since all these item specifics are wrong Let's check out this Josh Allen card too and see if we see the same type of thing with the item specifics Yep, here you see same thing again. This is what happens when you do a sell similar for cards and sometimes you're gonna have things where it's all messed up in terms of the item specifics and people won't change these. You're trying to go fast especially if you don't sell cards if you sell like clothes or whatever you might just change a few item specifics and leave a lot of the other ones the same and then you get incorrect information like this. The reason why I wouldn't recommend trying to game the system with techniques like that is because of eBay's Pykrolov system. This is a old post you can see it's from back in 2020 but what Pykrolov does is it allows eBay to have what's called an experiment management system and what it does is it allows eBay to test different machine learning algorithms and quickly switch from one to the other and iterate quickly so they can try to get the best search results for their shoppers and that's this is probably the reason why so many of us sellers have seen wild fluctuations in our sales and in our exposure on eBay is because eBay is testing different machine learning algorithms on the live site and some of it may help us and some of it may hurt us. And I think the reason why some of it does, makes our sales better, some of it makes it worse and it is different for different sellers is because of that sync between item specifics, title, and image. Based on what eBay has been publishing and what I've been kind of seeing with my research is that having your title, your image, and your item specifics all saying the same thing is very important. And the people who have seen the biggest hits to their eBay stores on YouTube have problems like this. So this hat here, one, the title's not very good and it doesn't even have the color in it, for example, and unknown is not a good first keyword. Um, but if we come down here, we can see that the theme is logo. Um, I don't know if I would put that as a theme. Character NA, that should just be blank since there's no character. Fabric type, that should be blank. When you fill in these unknowns, it makes your listing that doesn't fit into the framework that eBay's created. And I think that throws off the machine learning thing. And here we see it says multicolor, but obviously the hat is red. Like if a machine learning robot opened this image and said, what color is it? It's going to conclude red rather than multicolor. So you really want to have all these things sync up. All these unknowns and NAs just give it a variable that doesn't help the system. All these mismatched item specifics and ones that aren't part of eBay's system just throw off the machine learning algorithm. That's, that's my theory. And the reason why I know that eBay is looking at your images is because they tell us exactly how they do it. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, one point that I want to make is that 
when I was big into Google Ads, Google AdWords back in the day, Google told you that they had a quality score for your account. So if you had your campaigns uh, set up in a way where your keywords were really tight with your ad groups and with your landing page and with your ad copy, like if they were all kind of saying the same thing, you would get a higher quality score because that told Google that your ad was highly relevant to that keyword that you're targeting. And that would lead to you getting higher positioning in the ads and a lower cost per click. eBay, I guarantee you, they're gonna be using the same type of metric behind the scenes. They've probably been using it for years, giving quality scores to different eBay seller accounts. And what I'm thinking right now is some of these machine learning algorithms that they're testing weigh your account's quality score into their factoring of where they're going to rank your listings. So if you have a lot of listings that are all mismatched and not consistent between image title and item specifics, that's going to probably hurt your your quality score as a seller account. And if you have low feedback, that's gonna hurt it. If you have policies that reduce conversion rates, that's probably gonna hurt it. Um, if you don't accept returns, that might hurt it. I, I think all these different variables that improve the customer experience are being tracked by eBay and then put through some formula that scores seller accounts and gives them some kind of multiplier that will help increase the visibility of their listings because eBay wants to sell more stuff and get more money. <laughs> I know this video is about keywords and we're kind of all over the place, but it all ties together. And this is part of how it ties together. Um, so eBay is using what are called vector embeddings to identify what a product is by its image. And then what it does is it assigns this image style its own code, kind of like a keyword. So eBay can look at this pillow and they know it's an orange killum pillow, whatever whatever that means. I don't, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but if you click on this pillow when you're searching for pillows, eBay is looking at the pattern of this pill and they're like, all right, this user likes this style. So I'm going to show them more stuff in the recommended listings that match this image, that have the same image keyword, for lack of a better term, or the same image code. And that's how you get all these different listings popping up in their search results and in their recommended listings for this type of pillow. Part of the way that the machine learning algorithm starts to identify these images is by matching what the image looks like to the title and to the item specifics. This is why it's so important for those all to match because the more that they match, the better the results they can give when they're recommending the users these items. So if they're showing somebody who searches for a pillow like this, if you have like the wrong item specifics or the wrong title and they show a related image or listing with the wrong image and then someone doesn't click on it and you have a 0% click through rate in this machine learning algorithm test, then your listing is going to be considered bad and they're not going to show it anymore. That's what I'm thinking is happening for a lot of these sellers. And you can go into like all the math and all the nerdy stuff about how this works here and kind of see what they're doing specifically to pull this stuff out. Uh, but I think that they're telling us, they're telling us exactly what they're trying to do, how they're trying to do it. And if you boil it down to its most simple form, it all comes down to just doing the basics, get the title right, get the image right and get the item specifics right. And I think a lot of sellers, especially guys like me who have been doing this for a long time, it, it's easy to get set in your ways and just do sell similar and, and not worry about checking the item specifics because you know, I'm trying to do my listing as quick as possible. Uh, those days I think are over just blindly selling similar. You can't do that anymore. I did a Twitter thread on this too. And th I think one of the big terms here is just because an item sold doesn't mean the listing was good. And one of the things I did was I searched for uh, two rookie red prism and I pulled up the results on my phone here and you can see they're all pretty decent. You can see the item specifics here. They're all done pretty much correctly for the top listings but then you hit one that really sucks. So you'll notice that the one of them didn't have the right item specifics, but it was still showed to me third in the results. 
and we can go deeper into the results here. I, I went down and this one, instead of being a prism, it was listed as a refractor and it's not, not a refractor. There's no refractors and uh, Panini prism. Uh, so it, with sports cards, it's nice because it's very easy to just get all of the item specifics right. You don't need to, to know a lot of stuff to do that. Whereas like with clothing, you need to know like all the different cuts and styles and patterns and things like that. So for if you sell things that are outside of the trading card realm, you probably have a lot of research to do so that you know what all the item specifics mean and know what they all are. That's that's important too. The number two listing for me that was bad was actually there because it was from a seller that I had saved and that I had purchased from before. So if you are somebody who's selling volume, like a lot of us with our bulk trading card singles, will show up higher for people who have purchased from us before or from people who have saved us as a seller that they're basically taking users who say okay i like this seller and i like what they have so i'm going to take the action of saving them or i'm going to take the action of buying from them and that tells ebay okay this person will probably be more likely to buy from the seller again so regardless of how messed up their listing is i'm still going to show it to them to try to get that sale so now that we know all of this information from eBay, we come back to our Jerry Rice rookie card example, and we see that these have sold. Now, you might think that you could just do a sell similar, use those same item specifics, trick eBay, sell your card faster. And that might work in some of their algorithm tests, but what is probably more likely is somebody who has bought from the seller before saw these pop up because they had them as a saved seller or because eBay knows they've purchased for them, and that could be why they saw these listings. Whereas if you have somebody who's just never bought from you before, they're just looking for something specific and they type it in, they're probably not going to see these listings. And this is the new trap with eBay is when you're doing your sell similars, you don't know if that listing sold because it was a perfect listing or if because it sold to a repeat buyer or for any number of other factors that could have got that listing in front of that person. So if you do a sell similar of a bad listing, you're setting yourself up for, for failure right out, out of the gate. So you, if you're going to do that technique, you need to check the item specifics and make sure that they're correct. Or you need to create a process like what we do with trading cards, with a chrono card, with my software. Your process and make sure that all your item specifics and your title are perfect every single time. I think that kind of process and technology would work for other categories on eBay, but I just don't know of any companies doing it yet. And it's something that I might explore in the future for fun. <laughs> but I have too many for fun projects right now, like this YouTube channel. <laughs> So to bring this all together, you want to make sure that when you're creating a listing, you're using keywords that get high search volume and accurately describe your listing. That's going to be the first step. Figure out what keywords are most important to the types of things that you sell. Maybe do some test listings with the, uh, the promoter listing advanced here. Make up listings where you put your own keywords in and price it at like a million dollars or whatever. So no one buys it and you can just use it to to feed the suggested data area here. The way to populate these test listings would be to use your common sense, think of what you would type in to find something, but then also you can go to eBay and type like, if I start typing grandpa, we see like grandpa sweater, grandpa core sweater, that was a recent search of mine. <laughs> Uh, you can type in and see what the autofill recommends because this is going to be what the most popular searches are. And you can use these ideas to populate your test listing to populate your suggested keywords in this tool from eBay here. Since you made it this far in this video, I'm going to give you a little bonus here. So I did a search for 1985 leaf lot, which you know how I do my research now. I know that's an important keyword. And we can see here, this one's the top one. That one's ending soon, so that's a good one for eBay to show. Uh, and then here we have my listing that I created, 1985 leaf lot, first keyword. And I'm not promoting that. So the trick that I want to teach you is let's do a search for 1985 leaf, 117 Rudy Law, this particular card. All right, there's the card there from Burbank. That makes sense as first. Uh, we'll scroll down. It's going to be a minute because that, that keyword's not in my title, but you'll notice I show up down here. There aren't a lot of options here for the for the, the card, and this could be true for other cards. There might be even fewer searches, but you'll notice my listing is right here. Now, why is my listing under this results matching fewer words? I'll show you why. When you come into my listing here, 
I have all this stuff in my item specifics. This is generated automatically with my software. And we can see here, let's see. Oh, what did I search for? <laughs> All right, that, that's Rudy Law. Let's see if Rudy Law is in my item specifics. Yep, there he is in my item specifics. Um, oh, it looks like my team's messed up putting the wrong thing in there. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> oh man, this explains why my lots stopped selling as quickly as they were before. I got my teams all mixed up. <laughs> all right, cool, I'll fix that off camera. Um, but the other thing here to look at is here it is. I have the name of the card listed out in my description. eBay will also look at your description for keywords. So what I've been doing is using the Chrono Card AI to populate the name of every card in my lot listings into the description as well as maxing out these item specifics. These item specifics, um, you're, for player and athlete and for team, you're maxed out at 30. Um, so if it's a lot of 100, you can't put all 100 in there. eBay will cap you at 30. So that's something to keep in mind. I gotta change this. I've re I've changed this already in my newer listings because this is something I manually typed in, and I'd rather this be blank than have a uh, an abnormal thing there because I don't want this abnormal entry to confuse the algorithms. One last bonus I want to add is one I don't have any data for, but it makes sense and it's worked for me with Google stuff. So I think eBay will also work for. Uh, and that's using all of the features available to you in your eBay store. eBay wants data on how their customers interact with their features. So in order for them to get that data, they need customers to be exposed to those features so they can interact with them. So if, if everything else is equal between two listings, the seller who has all the store features filled out is probably going to be shown above the seller that doesn't use all the store features because by showing the seller with the store features in use, eBay has a chance of achieving the goal of collecting customer data on how they interact with those features. So that's why I made sure to fill out everything in my store. You can see I have some custom uh, images here I made with uh, Photoshop and AI to generate these and kind of keep everything on brand here and uh, so those are my store categories which you'll notice I name with keywords which is pretty easy with um, sports cards <laughs> but for like if you're selling other categories maybe you have like coffee coffee cups or I don't know tops women's tops or I don't know what the what it would be but you can do it with other categories too and then here in my about, I have the video added. Um, I have the keyword sports card store stuck, snuck in here. Please save me as a seller. Um, I'm trying to encourage people to save me. And then I have more keywords here just so that if, if eBay is looking at that, like I suspect they can find it. And then you put all your store policies here. It's easy. You can do this in like if you're even if you're generating all these custom images with like dolly you can probably get this done in under an hour and i think that gives you a little bit of an edge uh and the last thing i want to add is i mean at the beginning of the video my clips the little time in the bottom right it was like the 15th of october now it's the 26th <laughs> i think what i'm going to start doing with the youtube channel is probably kind of not try to put so much effort into planning and editing the videos but rather just share the information like i did in older videos um they're not going to be as as tight but i think it's going to be better because then i can get more information out more quickly because between plan planning for this video which <laughs> i i ditched the plan like halfway through you probably noticed um but but planning the video and then trying to cut and edit it and then I want to talk about topics that probably shouldn't be in the video, should go in a different video. I'd rather just put it all into one video so you don't have to like bounce around from video to video. I know that's like counterintuitive to how YouTube tries to incentivize you. Um, but my thought is to get out more, more content like this so that people can try to benefit from it sooner and easier and I can produce more for you guys. Um, another thing that I'm working on with the channel is I want to interview people who have like really cool businesses within like the sports card 
in like sports world. So I have some some guests lined up. Um, th that's going to be really exciting. I've never done it before, and um, I don't think any of my guests so far have ever been on a YouTube channel. So that'll be really interesting. I'm going to look forward to seeing your guys' uh, feedback and comments on that. But anyway, thanks for watching the entire video. I hope this was helpful to you. Hope it's giving you some things to think about and some things to look for in your store if you're struggling with low sales. Like may maybe now you you kind of have like the path forward to try to fix it or at least not make those errors again in the future. Um, but yeah, thanks again. Bye.